Welcome to the Full Nelson. Today I want to talk to you guys about what I feel are the best firearms for home defense. Here on the table we have a Remington 870 Express 12 gauge shotgun, we have an AR-15, and we have a Glock 17. Now, I don't feel that these particular makes and models of the guns are necessarily the best. I'm just talking about the breed of guns themselves. So, a handgun, AR-15 rifle, any right AK-47, any of those, would, all of those would be perfectly suitable. Any other AR-15, doesn't matter. And a 12-gauge shotgun. I would recommend a Remington 870 or a Mossberg 590, something like that. Now, I want to talk about the strengths and weaknesses of these particular weapon systems, what they do well, what they don't do so well, and hopefully give you guys some ideas about what would be best for you to use in your home. So we're going to start out with the 12 gauge shotgun. The thing that a 12 gauge shotgun has going for it, the biggest thing is power. There is no substitute for the brute force or the, or the raw power that a 12 gauge shotgun has. A lot of people for self defense use double O buckshot. That's what I'm using. And just to try to give you guys an idea of the power, I'm going to explain what a typical double O buckshot load looks like and what I have in, have in my gun. So a typical double O buckshot round is two and three quarter inches and it has nine pellets. Each one of those pellets weighs 53 point something grains. So between 53 and 54 grains is what a typical pellet in double O buckshot weighs. So if you have, you have nine pellets that weigh 53.7 grains, I think is what it is, each. Okay? A typical bullet for an AR-15, or a pretty common bullet, you can get heavier bullets or lighter bullets, but probably the most common is 55 grains. So a single load of double buckshot out of a shotgun is shooting as much lead as 14 rounds out of an AR-15. Sorry, 8 rounds if you're using a 2 and 3 quarter 9 pellet double O buckshot, I'm using a 3 inch magnum 15 pellet buckshot. So for me, one of these bullets is shooting as much lead as 14 out of my AR-15 with 55 grain loads. Now if you're using 9 pellet, it's like between eight and nine rounds because it's not quite 55, it's 53.7, something like that, each pellet. So, so raw power. You have some serious power out of a 12 gauge shotgun. I, if I remember right, it's between seven and 800 grains of lead out of this gun. I can't remember, I haven't done the math in quite a while, but it's a lot of lead is going down range in a single shot of this. The reason why that's really advantageous is because if the person were armed, if you shoot them one time with something like this and you hit them center mass, they're probably going to be incapacitated immediately. I'm not going to say they will for certain, but I'd say there's a pretty good chance. Now if you're using a handgun or an AR-15, I'm not saying they couldn't be incapacitated immediately if you shot them in the head. Of course they would be if you just shot center mass. It may take a few rounds. It just depends but your likelihood of an instant incapacitation situation or nearly instant is a lot higher with the 12 gauge shotgun. It's just going to take less bullets with this to incapacitate somebody than it would with these other two. That's the strength of the 12 gauge. The disadvantage is it has a lot higher recoil than an AR-15 if you're talking about a weapon that you're actually going to shoulder and that is going to be a problem for some people. There's a lot of people who can't, cannot handle shooting 3 inch magnum double O buckshot or slugs. There's people who can't handle shooting 2 and 3 quarter and they use reduced recoil 2 and 3 quarter loads. All that's perfectly fine. That's still going to work just fine for you. I'm not saying you have to use what I'm using. I'm just saying the raw power of the 12 gauge is really a tie point. The disadvantage is the recoil. And for a woman a smaller woman, not all women, um, some women, some men are going to struggle with the, the extra recoil of the 12 gauge. 
The other disadvantage is its rate of fire. You cannot shoot a 12 gauge pump action shotgun as fast as you could shoot an AR-15 or, or a semi-automatic handgun. It's just not going to happen. Hopefully you wouldn't need to because the extra power makes up for the lack of the rate of fire. I don't need to shoot a whole bunch of rounds, I just need to shoot one of these because one of these is like 14 of these. So, that, so that's kind of the ideology behind the, behind the 12 gauge. So higher recoil, lower rate of fire, also quite a bit heavier. This gun loaded with the way I've got it, with magazine tube extension, the side saddle, everything like that is quite heavy. And the last thing is the capacity. 12 gauge in this particular gun, I can hold seven. So I've got six three inch magnum, 15 pellet buckshot, and one two and three quarter, which is the last one that will go in the chamber. That's nine pellet. So I can hold seven in this particular gun. AR-15, you get 30. Glock 17, you get 17 with the standard mag, 33 rounds with this extended magazine. So those are the weaknesses for the 12 gauge. Now I want to move on to the AR-15. The AR-15 obviously doesn't have as much brute force or raw power as what a 12 gauge has at its disposal, but it does have some major advantages. Recoil. If you struggle with recoil, this is the way to go. If you think you are going to forget to pump the shotgun in between, going back to the rate of fire, that's when the disadvantage you have to pump it every round. If you short shotgun, don't pump it all the way or you don't know how to use some, uh, a weapon like this, a woman or a, a child or something like that, with an AR-15 you typically don't need to remember that. If the gun's already loaded and ready to go, assuming that you don't have a malfunction, you're probably going to be able to get all 30 rounds off just by pulling the trigger. You don't need to worry about racking the slide every time or, or anything like that. So this is going to be easier in that regard. It has lower recoil than a 12 gauge shotgun and higher capacity than a 12 gauge. It's also lighter. All of these things are major advantages. All those politicians out there that say you don't need this to defend your home and blah, 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 12 gauge is what you need. Not if you're recoil sensitive. This would be a much better option than 12 gauge shotgun. Not if you have 10, you know, if I had five guys breaking into my apartment, would I rather have this or this? Well, I don't know. These are going to be pretty devastating, but the rate of fire and the 30 round capacity, when you're getting towards the capacity limit of this, it may be more advantageous to have the higher capacity. It really just depends. But this could certainly be better, depending on the situation, than this. Now, what about shooting through drywall or accidentally injuring somebody in your home? I think a 223 would be better in that situation, or 556, than a 12 gauge with this super heavy loads of double O buckshot. All that lead flying around your house as far as accidentally injuring somebody. So that's another advantage that I would give to an AR-15. So those are the strengths as I see them with the AR-15 and the weaknesses. It just doesn't have as much power in a single shot as what a 12 gauge has, is, has at its disposal. Now a couple of disadvantages that both of these weapons have when compared to a handgun is just their length. So if you're in your house and you're walking around a corner, oh, before I get further into that I wanted to mention one more advantage this has. If you have a big house, so you may have to shoot at somebody who is, and this may not apply to a lot of you, but isn't 15 feet away or 20 feet away or something like that, if you have a big house where you have a really long hallway that may be 70 feet long or something like that or is 100 feet long, I would probably go with some flight control rounds from Federal for buckshot that will keep your pattern really tight or I would go with a rifle because you can be more precise. You're not just going to be shooting it down there and hoping two or three pellets will hit and the rest will just go wherever. So that's another advantage is at a, at a longer range this would be better. But generally in a home defense situation you're not at a long range. That's why a lot of people like a shotgun. Now back to what I was talking about, the length of these guns. The length of these guns compared to a handgun can be, disad can be a disadvantage. Um, in one of my videos I mentioned how somebody tried to get into my house the other day. You have a shotgun like this and you have the barrel down next to you and you have your hand on fire control it's almost impossible to keep that gun trained on the door or open the door with the barrel pointed at the person. I shouldn't say it's impossible, it's just more difficult. 
with the handgun, you could have the handgun behind your back. You could even take the handgun and open your door and have the handgun, you know, already up and ready one-handed if you had to, to, to shoot that way. So that's one of the advantages a handgun has in terms of maneuverability is that it's not as long, it's just not as, as cumbersome as some of these. I feel like these are definitely worth the trade-off though when it comes to firepower. I'd never recommend a handgun as, as your primary choice unless you have nothing else. If you have one of these other options and somebody's trying to break in your house, I'd grab one of these before this. But a handgun can work really well as, as well for the reason I mentioned it's, it's shorter, it's easier to maneuver around. Um, a handgun's a great option for a backup, so if you're going to go answer the door with like an AR-15, you could have a malfunction with it, you know, semi-automatic wise, or you have your pump action shotgun, or you know, something were to go wrong with your primary weapon system, it may be a really good idea to have a handgun as a backup. Now, one other thing I want to talk about that I think is absolutely essential for any of these weapons, if you decide to configure them for home defense and use them as your primary home defense weapon, is a weapon light you need to be able to identify the target if it's dark so that you don't accidentally shoot a friend or a family member one of your own kids that's getting up running around in the middle of the night if you have a son whose girlfriend came over in the middle of the night or a daughter whose boyfriend came over you may want to shoot them but you probably shouldn't you know there's a lot of situations in which you don't want to shoot blindly not knowing who it is you're shooting at. So a weapon light for your primary home defense weapon is an absolute must. I use this 12 gauge as my primary home defense weapon and this light is on it. The only reason it's not is because I was putting this video together but it will go back on this gun and in the corner ready to go. So make sure you put a weapon light on. That's an absolute must in my opinion to be able to identify your target. Now a weapon for my wife, like I mentioned the other day, I would hand her this gun or this is the gun I would prefer that she grabs if there's a situation and she needs to use a firearm because she doesn't have to worry about short shucking the shotgun which I've seen her do one or two times when we went out and practice she doesn't have to worry about the really high recoil any of that sort of thing so anyway these are what I feel like are the best three options in my opinion and are representative of you know any 12 gauge shotgun, any AR-15, AK-47 variant type rifle, 308 semi-automatic rifle and pretty much any handgun, full-size handgun that's considered reliable. If you guys have any questions or comments feel free to leave those in the comment section. That's all I've got for you guys today. Have a nice day.